Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about closures. Sometimes when you make a book, maybe you want to add a closure to it just so that stuff doesn't fall out or you can booby trap it so your little brother doesn't read it. You know, all those things, right? <laughs> So let's talk about some different closures that we can use for um, any kind of book, really. This is the one I used on the last lap book I made. If you are unfamiliar with this lap book project, I will link that playlist down below so you can check it out if you would like to. And this one happens to be a strap made out of some leather that is backed with some fabric. And I just sewed the two together after using some fabric glue in the middle. Then I punched these three holes and attached it to the back of the book with these little nails and, and some glue. And then I put one of these hitch posts on the inside. Um, you punch a hole and added this hitch post. And then this, since it has three holes, kind of like a belt, if more things are added to it, you could loosen it up or you could make it real tight if you wanted to, but I just put it on the middle one. So this is one version that you could use. These two books have a tie made out of seam binders ribbon and the ties are sandwiched in between the cover and the inside lining on these. But they don't have to be sandwiched inside it could be attached with glue onto the outside or, or the inside um, on the front and the back cover. It depends on whether the book that you want to add a closure to is already built or if you're going to be adding it in the process of making it. If that is the case, you can sandwich it in between as you're making the book. However, if it's more like maybe a book you bought or that somebody gave you that you wanted to add it to, then you have to adapt it in other ways. This one too was added on the inside between the cover and the, the inside of the lining. In this book, uh, I used some silk and some satin and I sewed them together in like a layered tie and then it's just used to wrap around the book. So it's loose from the book, it's not attached to it. And maybe sometimes that might be an option if you don't wanna put holes in the book or maybe you're giving it to somebody and you're not sure if they want to keep the tie. Maybe you think, oh, maybe, what if they wanna take it off? Then in this way, you could have a little separate tie um, just for the presentation and then they can decide whether they wanna keep it or not. But let's do some real world examples um, of installing them so we can talk about even some other ways you can use some kind of a closure. I cut a bunch of little mock books. They're gonna be little mock covers that we're gonna pretend these are books, okay? But I wanted to have um, some little samples so that we could actually attach some of these closures and talk about the variations of those closures. Okay, so some of them you can buy. Like this one is a swivel lock and you can get these um, on Amazon. You can get them at like leather supply stores or different craft stores and they come in two pieces. This has a little, oops, this has a swivel latch that goes through this side that has a hole and to, to latch it. I've seen these on purses too. And then there's like this one, and this is like a, a hasp for a maybe a box, not necessarily a book, but a book is kind of like a box, isn't it? So let's say you want to put one of this, the swivel hasp thing. Um, one thing that you need to think about is what side do you want actually attached to the front cover? And I say that because you could do it either way, I guess. I mean, it's going to be up to you how you want it to look. I would, I think, want this side hooked to the book on the front cover. And then this side will have to be attached to like, um, I don't know, a uh, like a strap of leather that will wrap around the side of the book from the back to the front so that you have a strap that closes it in, right? So as far as that goes, 
you could attach this with some glue and then you could run some brads. Here we go. Got all kinds of sizes in here, but the glue will hold it down for the most part, or you could even sew it because there are holes. So you could sew through these little holes that it comes with. There are little screws that came with this set, but I don't necessarily want to put screws through leather. So I didn't think that'd be a great idea. But anyway, you could sew it or you could glue it and then you could poke through these brads. So I will do that real quick. I'm going to fold this in half. I don't necessarily want the raw side of the leather out. So I'm just going to fold it in half like so. And then this side will kind of hang out at the end of this loop. So if I open it back up, after I've placed it, then I can set it down, make sure I line it up however it is that I want to line it up. And then I will take, I'll take this little pokey tool and I'm going to poke through the leather to mark those two holes. And you could use fabric, you could use craft text, you could use lace or some kind of trim whatever you have laying around. And I'll grab this one and that one. I don't think I'm going to glue this down just because I don't want it here forever. So I'm going to run these brads through to the back and then open up the ends to secure that down. And then the same thing on the side where I poke the hole, just like that. And now all I have to do is fold this in half. And when I fold this in half and glue it together, then it seals in those brads and you don't see the ends of them and it's all secure. I'm going to use a piece of this double-sided sticky tape as opposed to glue just for the time being, but we can pretend it's glue. And then we can wrap it around our book and attach it to the back cover. And we can attach it however we want to attach it. We can sew it, we can glue it. Uh, you can use some more of the little brad pieces, especially if you're going to be hiding them underneath the lining or adding a little strip of paper or fabric or leather just to cover up the ends. You can do that too. But it depends on how thick your book is. Let's just take this one for example. Um, this one, it would be kind of hard pressed to use on this book because it's so thick. It needs to be a, maybe a little bit longer so that it can be attached onto the back securely and then wrap around the front. So it's gonna depend on how thick your book is. So you can work, you can work that out. But this is our pretend one, remember? So it doesn't matter. So I am going to kind of set it wherever it is that I think would look decent. And then where's my front? This is my front, okay? So it can be about, I'm gonna say about there, should be fine. And I'm not gonna attach it to the front, of course, but I just need to hold it there. I'll use this little clip from the dollar store to just hold it there for a second. And then again, instead of glue, I'll just use some and you can even glue it and then sew it if you want to do a double duty thing. So it's attached to the back cover. Now, if you look at this other piece that goes on the front, you may notice that because this is attached to this leather strap, let's see if I can get the camera to Maybe that's better. So this is higher. So this one is higher than this one. So you may have to create like a little shim, like a little base so that they are a similar height. I'm just gonna mark that. I just, this is a piece of mat board, which is kind of like chipboard. And what that does is it raises the height 
of this one so that it matches with this one. I'm sure that makes sense. So let me put this clip back on it like that so that it's held in place. And this little base could be painted to match your cover, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna hold it on here. Hopefully it's somewhat center and mark the two holes so that I can punch these holes. And of course it, it could just be glued to this little base piece. It doesn't have to be held down with brads or anything like that, but I just thought I would. It would probably be a good idea to glue it and put the brads through both at the same time. I'll go ahead and close the lock and hold it up against the other piece there. And now that I've marked these, I'll go ahead and glue this since it's just paper. And then I can add the brads to fill in these little holes. If you don't want to use brads and you just want to glue it down, you could always go ahead and glue it down and then use some hot glue or some like a glossy accents. You know what I'm talking about? The stuff that gets, it's almost like resin. And then you could just paint over the top, just paint black or something over the top. And then it would look like there's little, you know, nails or something in there, but there's, there's not. So you could definitely fake it. So we can pretend that we either put some nails or brads or something in, or glue, something in there. But that's how this one could be attached. And like I said, you can get these all over the place. I think I got these on Amazon. Anything that can be accessed fairly easily on Amazon, I will make sure that they are added to the booksmithables list, which is one of my Amazon favorites lists. And the link to that will be below um, this video like it always is. So there is this one. This one would be done in a similar way with a strap that has this on it or, or this, however it is that you wanna do it, but it would be done in the exact same way, except it would have this little hasp on it instead. I would probably do it this way to where this part of the hasp stays on the book, like this one with a little support base underneath it. And then this one is attached to the strap. So similar process. Okay, then we could also do something like a circle and a string, which this is just some cardstock, like heavy cardstock. And I glued two pieces together. And then I took one of these hole punch reinforcer punchers and I punched out a couple of these and what I do is I glue a couple of those in a, in layers on the back side and what that does is it allows for room for the string to go underneath the circle. I've got allergies I think so please pardon me if I start to sneeze or sound like I'm hacking a lung glue those together in two layers underneath to create that little gap there. And then in a similar way, on the front, let's say the front of the book, let's say this is the front, I don't know, put it about there. I will go ahead and mark that hole and put glue on that inner circle. and stick it down, put a little clamp on it for a second. Then you'll need a string of some kind. I'll just cut off about, I don't know, 12 inches or so. And once that is somewhat dry, I will punch the hole through there like that. And then to secure it, I will take one of these little eyelets. And of course I have this crocodile thing. It's a, a pretty handy dandy little thing. 
and I will secure that little circle down with that eyelet and the glue. Then for the string, I'm just gonna mark the center of that onto there. It doesn't have to be this far in. I just wanted it to be centered. And then I will thread that thread, thread the thread, thread the twine through that little hole. I don't know if I would do a knot. I probably wouldn't because that might be a little too bulky. But I would either cut a little circle out or a little square something or hide it behind a little pocket on the inside back cover of your book. I'm just gonna glue that down and that will hold that string in place. And what's great about this kind of a closure is that it can go around all different thicknesses of books. And then you could just wind that around the circle and no matter how thick your book is, as long as you make your twine long enough, then you should be good to go. You can use different kinds of twine. You could use seam binders, ribbon, whatever you think will fit underneath this circle that you can thread through the back of the cover. So there is another closure. As opposed to a circle, you could also use a button. If you use a button with a shank on the back, then that creates that gap that you need. If you poke two holes through the cover, then you could just thread through, you know, some twine or some heavy duty thread of some kind and tie that onto the front cover. And then you could have a piece of twine like this or a piece of elastic cord, like a loop of elastic cord could be attached to the back cover. And then that little loop could stretch around and around the button to close it. You could also use just a regular button button, a button button, and you could run some elastic cord through that. And you could knot the end like so. It doesn't even have to be attached to the book at all. You could just use it for like a belt. And that's pretty easy to do as well. You could also do a buckle of sorts. I have this shell buckle and I also have, I think this is a Tim Holtz buckle. You could attach this side to the edge of your book, whether at the very edge or back a little bit. So let me get one of these little brads and you could use anything, I guess, since I have these here. So there is that. And then where is you could use a strip of fabric or craft text or leather or whatever. I have this little strip of old measuring tape. And I will cut a little piece off of here. And I'll glue it to the back here. I will clamp that just for a moment, just because White glue likes to have pressure applied to it to finish the adhesion process. And while that is drying, let me show you this buckle. And this would just be a buckle that doesn't really have a mechanism. It's basically a big button with a, a bar across the middle. And if I took some ribbon and threaded it through like this, then I could stitch this closed, but right now I'll use tape. Okay, tape that down. And then this one could wrap around a book. And then the other end, let's see. I don't really want to cut this since it's just a uh, an example. So let's say here's the, here's the other end. And you just run it through the same two sides like that. We'll pretend it's shorter. And you just cinch it up like a regular belt. And for this buckle, you can run this through here. You have to make a hole or a few holes. And then that holds your book closed as well. 
All right, well, I hope that gave you um, maybe some ideas for closures for your next book. This, of course, is barely touching the surface of the different options that there are for book closures. So if you have any favorites, feel free to put them in the comments down below and share with us how you feel about different kinds of closures that you've used and your favorites. But that will be it for me for today. I hope everybody is having an excellent Friday, unless it's Saturday, wherever you are. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.